The next topic that we will discuss in our look at probability and statistics is called standard deviation. Now, when we were dealing with range and the interquartile range in our previous lesson, we were looking at how far the information spread from the median. In standard deviation, we're going to be looking at how things compare to the mean. So let's start with a couple of terms that are going to be very helpful in this. And the first is mean. And mean is the average value of a data set found by summing the terms of the sets and dividing by the number of terms. Now, when we do this, a lot of times we're going to be using shorthand. The symbol for mean can either be the Greek lowercase, Greek letter mu, or x bar. Mu is the mean of a population. X bar typically is the mean of a sample. And in order to take this, we have the sum of all the terms divided by the number of terms. And that number can be either a lowercase or an uppercase n. Uppercase n means the number of items in the population. Lowercase is the number of items in a sample. If you're finding the average height of people at your school, typically that's a small enough number you could ask everybody. If you wanted the average height of people of an entire nation, that's beyond reasonable capability to find, so you would take from a sample and you use lowercase n. Our next term we're going to look at is variance. And variance is an amount of difference or change from a mean found by dividing the square of the differences by the number of terms. And we'll talk more about what that calculation looks like here in a minute. Variance has two symbols that are used for it as well. You can use either lowercase letter sigma, which stands for the variance of a population in sigma squared, or you can use lowercase s squared to stand for the um, variance of a sample. Last, we have standard deviation itself. And this is the measure of dispersion of a group from the mean of that group found by taking the square root of the variance. So if variance is signified by a sigma squared or an s squared, standard deviation is simply going to be sigma or s, depending on if it is a population or a sample. So what we're going to be working on in this lesson is how to calculate that variance in standard deviation. Again, standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Let's take a look. The normal high, daily high temperatures of 10 selected U.S. cities for the month of January are shown here. We want to calculate the mean, variance, and standard deviation of the data set. So, in order to do this, we first begin with our mean. And mean, as was just stated, is the sum of our terms divided by the number of terms. I'm using a lowercase n because this is a sample, not the population. This isn't every city in the United States. So we're going to add all these numbers together and divide by 10. When we add the numbers together, we get a total of 441 divided by 10 gives us an average temperature, these are in degrees Fahrenheit, of 44 and 1 tenth degree. <clears throat> now in order to find variance, which was S squared, what we're going to do is we're going to take each of our data values and subtract the mean. We're going to square those add them together, and divide by the number of terms. So, what this means is we're going to take 50 minus our 44.1 and square it, add to that 37 minus 44.1 squared, and keep adding all the way down to 61 minus the 44.1 squared and divide all those numbers by 10. So when we go through and run this calculation, we come up with a total value of 1,328 and 9 tenths, 
when divided by 10 gives us a, a variance of 132 and 89 hundredths. So when we go through from this and find our variance, which is simply the square root of our standard deviation, we will have the square root of 132 and 89 hundredths, which will be approximately 12 and 15 hundredths of a degree. So what that means is our median, our mean value is 44.1 degrees Fahrenheit, and there's a fairly decent spread. I mean, our standard deviation here is somewhere around 30% of our mean, so that means we're going to have a very loose spread. Uh, in our, an upcoming lesson, we'll be talking about normal distribution, which is the bell curve people talk about when we're looking at grades a lot of times. The 44 and 1 tenth is the center of our bell curve, and the 12, point, the 12 and 15 hundredths is the spread on it. So this is a fairly gentle rise of a bell curve. But we'll talk more about that in coming lessons. So we can do all this work by hand, and when you have a data set of 10 numbers, and those numbers are all relatively small, this is easy. But what happens when we start to look into larger populations, or larger samples, or numbers that aren't quite as friendly, such as numbers in the thousands or hundreds of thousands? There is a way of using technology, our calculators, in order to speed up this work. So what we're going to do is use the number set here. Uh, the table shows the number of hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean from 1992 to 2006. 1992 signifies year 1, and 2006 is year 15. Calculate the mean variance and standard deviation of the data set, and within how many standard deviations of the mean does all the data fall? So what we need to do is take and enter this information. On whatever technology you use, you will have a stat menu. And when you enter into that, there is a way to edit a list. However you are able to do that, go in and populate the list with the number of items that are shown here. Once you have populated that list, somewhere back in your main stat menu will be an option of calculating certain items. In that calculation menu, you should find something that says one variable stats or something to that nature. When you run your one variable stats on the list that you just created, it will give you a large number of items. Somewhere in that list, normally towards the top, you have an X bar. That X bar, in this case, is 7.26, and that 6 is repeating, so we would round up to 7.27. In the list, you should have an SX, and you'll have a Sigma X. Based on what we're doing here, if you get into a more in-depth study of statistics, you'll learn the difference between these. But we're going to ignore the SX option. We're going to look at the Sigma X. And that gives an approximate value of 3 and 21 hundredths. Now, it does not give us our variance. As you know, Sigma X is our standard deviation. So for variance, we're going to take our sigma x value and square it. And when we do that, we will come up with a value of approximately 10.33. So this greatly speeds up the work that needs to be done and allows us to more quickly find the values that we need. Now to answer the further question, within how many standard deviations of the mean does all the data fall? Well, our lowest value in our data set is 
3. Our largest value in the data set is 14. 2005 was a very rough year for the United States in terms of hurricanes. Now our mean was 7.27. In order to get out to the extremes of 3 and 14, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract these values and divide by our standard deviation. So we have 4.27 divided by 3.21 giving us a total of 1.3 standard deviations. Going the other way, 14 minus 7.27 is 6.73 divided by the 3.21 will give us a total of 2.10 when we round standard deviations. So if we're going off of whole standard deviations, all the data sets fall within three standard deviations of the mean. And that's going to be a number that is typical. Um, we'll get into some further discussion on that. And again, if you go into a more in-depth study of statistics, you'll learn more about why that is. But we can use the technology to speed our work, and we can use it to help analyze the data once we have it. So some new formulas in here, a little bit of new notation. Review it and make sure you have it down and understand it all.